<sighs> Hello. So, before I start off today, I thought I would show you a new thing I got. Got one of these obscene looking things. Get your mind out of the gutter. Anyway, I don't know where I'm going to stick it. <laughs> I know, you'll tell me where I can stick it. Anyway, see, because if I... The handlebar is kind of a dangerous thing because it could hit the mirror, you know. If I push forward on the handlebar on either side, I could put it down by my feet, I suppose, on the highway pegs. That's probably the best thing to do. Anyway, I'm still thinking about where I can mount this thing. Now it's time to go enjoy myself a little bit. Worked hard all day. Now I gotta do some chores. I figured I might as well take the bike. It's a nice day. I missed it. <laughs> I was so busy working. End of the semester. All kinds of stuff going on. Busy, busy, busy. And everybody's impatient. I emailed you yesterday. Well, you ain't the only one that emailed me yesterday. You ain't the only one that needs me. It's not like I'm sitting around doing nothing. Waiting. I see a blinker, but I don't trust it. All right, I trust it now. And of course, my eyes are all blurry from uh, working all day and staring at a computer screen and a TV. <laughs> it's always something, right? Oh, but ain't this nice. So what's today? The 9th of December? 10th? Yeah, I think today's the 10th. December the 10th. It's a Thursday. 53 degrees. 5-3, not bad. 15,719 miles on the odometer. I've scuffed in my tires enough now, I can feel the grippage. Is that a word? Grippage? Anyway, look at the sky, isn't that something? Wow. The only thing that stinks about the, the action cameras is it makes everything really far away for you. You don't see it in the up close like I do. Oh well. Ah, oh, that felt good. I can't really risk it on this corner because people come way over it. There's too many cars right now. <sighs> so what am I doing? I'm going to cash a check or deposit a check. And uh, i got to go to the ATM. And you might be thinking, hey Mike. Don't you have an app that take pictures? Yeah, I do, and I did, and apparently you got to write on the check a certain thing, and if you don't write it on the check, they call you and they say, you didn't do it right, dumbass. Now you got to go to a bank or an ATM and do it there. So, that's what I'm doing, taking my dumbass to the ATM. Don't 
Don't you worry, I know whose turn it was. I'm also going to pick up some cigarettes from a sweet pea. And all that's just up ahead here, so any extra riding I get in is just pure gravy at this point. Long, long day. Started at 7.48 a.m. And I stopped at about 4.15. Somebody burning leaves. I gotta do that too. Yesterday afternoon, my fun was uh, to go out in the yard and cut grass, or not grass really, so much as mulch the leaves. I got mulch blades on my mower. So I mulched up all the leaves, clean up the yard, make it look nice. And that was my medicine. This is my medicine today. This is my kind of weather, you know. 53, 54 degrees Fahrenheit is perfect. Look at the sun going down. Wow. So, uh, for those of you who did receive a, a little short intro blurb from me, I hope that uh, my blurbs don't suck too bad. This is your basic, you know, hello, you're watching. If you want me to do a blurb for you, just let me know. The, the only problem is I don't know how to get them to you. You can't download my videos, right? As far as I know. I mean, I can download my own videos. So the best I could do is email you, which is what I did with the other guy. So if you want me to do a blurb for you, send me your email. And the way you can do that is you can email me. And you're thinking, what's Mike's email? Well, think about it. What's my name? MikeKaylee7. M-A-I-K-E-L-I-7 at gmail.com. And I will do a blurb for you. Wait till you see the one I did for Moose. <laughs> that's very particular to Moose. I try to do something that's a little bit indicative of the person. I kind of figured that out halfway through the ones I was doing. So I think I did Bodine 52 kind of in Bodine style. And then I did the Moose one. I don't think I did the other ones in any particular style. Sorry. There's my ATM. Right in front of my Sweet Peas building. There comes the advice queens. Careful at that ATM. You're going to get mugged. Someone's going to steal your money. <sighs> All right, let's do this. Yeah. Yeah, we're doing, we're doing all right.
these piles of dead trees. So sad. But that's progress for you. Progress must happen. I heard a beep just then. I don't know what that was. The bike seems fine. I don't know. I'm hearing things. I think I'm starting to lose it. That, uh, that implies that I had it. I don't know what's scarier. So I'll do a shout out to uh, GB Winging It up there in New York. I think it's New York. Rides a gold wing like, like you know, like I ride a gold wing. And uh, his has got all the nice lights on it. I don't have the lights yet. He's uh, very smooth, he, you know, almost like a nighttime radio host. I just enjoy the uh, the timber of his voice, you know. He's he's kind of anal about his his tire pressure, and I haven't even checked mine yet. I figure I'm good if it ain't blinking. That's how bad I am. I got 38 on the front and 44 on the rear. Uh, I can't remember now. And that's of course you know warmed up. So I've been riding around, so it makes me wonder if the front's probably a little bit too low. Probably want to take care of that. There are all kinds of tire experts out there. There's all kinds of experts about every single thing you do. And of course they'll tell you, they will tell you. to get the cigarettes for the woman yes time to get the cigarettes for the woman 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 there we go something you want to know how much it costs to buy cigarettes in North Carolina let's see so apparently it's a hundred and seventy five dollars to buy three cartons of Marlboro Special Select 100s. Three cartons. Whew. That is one expensive habit. Not that I could sit in judgment with all the bad food I eat. I don't really, I don't ever tell her, don't smoke. Ain't my place. Grown ass woman can take care of herself. Dollar eighty two for the 87 unleaded. Oh, you know what? This traffic is going to be insane. Let me go back. Let me go the other way. There's more than one way to skin a cat, as they say. If I go in the direction that the traffic usually goes in the morning, then I'll be less likely to hit traffic. Yeah, see, see, see. Let's 
the other. Oh man, I'm screwed no matter which way I go. <laughs> oh well. Stupid traffic. Ruining all my fun. So, uh, when I was living in, in Massachusetts, I used to drive into uh, Revere, Mass. every day. From Lynn to Revere, Monday through Friday, and I would pull over, park at the uh, Wonderland Station. The Blue Line. They were thinking about extending the blue line all the way up into Lynn, but they never did. So if you want to go from Boston to Lynn on a train, you got to take the commuter rail, which is not as convenient. Anyway, so go to Wonderland Station, get on a blue line every morning. So if to fight the traffic to get in, you know, to get into the blue uh, Wonderland Station. And you're sitting on the train, sitting on the train, and sitting on the train. You can kind of zone out, or you can read a book, put on earphones, or whatever. And I remember the uh, the train conductor guy. Sometimes you get this really evil-sounding guy, like, Next stop, Wood Island. <laughs> I always wanted to see what that guy looked like, because he just sounded like the perfect villain. And then there's another guy, good morning everybody, the weather today is sunny, we're going to have a couple of snow flurries later on today, It just kind of give you the morning report, you know, that was cool. Oh, and all the characters you see, you know, when you're out there, when you're sitting on the train, you see the narcoleptics falling asleep, you see the homeless people. One of them was my brother one time. And he was collecting cans out of the station one night. I almost bawled my eyes out. He refused to to take care of himself and ended up collecting cans at a stupid train station, homeless, living in my sister's garage. He's the one that's in prison. Did I ever tell you that story? I have a brother in prison. Yeah, I guess I didn't. I don't think I've ever shared this story that I can remember. So let me share a little, little bit of my Kaylee Seven family stuff with you. So uh, I've got three older sisters, and I've got two younger brothers. Wow, look at this, huh? Construcción. Oh, oh, come on, Mike. All right. So my brother John. Uh, it goes Susie, Debbie, Laurie, me, and then John. And John, uh, he he was never quite normal. He was always kind of weird. Funny weird, but also really annoying. Like, he just loved to piss you off. That was like his favorite thing in the world to do, is piss you off. The number one phrase heard in my family when I was growing up was, Ma, John's bothering me. That was my brother Mark, constantly being bothered by John. I was bothered by him, my mother was bothered by him. Oh God, he was just insufferable. But when he was funny, he was friggin' hilarious. I served as the peacemaker in the family, so if my mom got real mad, I would have her sit in the living room and I'd have my brother go to his bedroom and I would talk to both of them, calm them down because she wanted to kill him. Oh man, are they ruining this whole thing now? I guess they have to, right? Because the highway's coming through. And houses, apparently. This wasn't here before. Dang, I haven't been on this road in a while. Ah, poop. <laughs> Look at those big strip in the middle they put. Huh. Well. Oh, well. It was nice while it lasted. <laughs> so, um... I went off to college. I get home uh, Columbus Day to, I had a break and I come home to work and my mother was sitting downstairs and she told me to go up and tell my brother to go to his dad's house. That was my stepfather. So I said, get upstairs, John, go. And I had heard these stories that he was 
smacking my mother around a little bit and shoving my stepfather, the, my mother's current husband. My mother was married three times. So uh, I said, John, go to your dad's house. Go to Pepe's house. That was, you know, the house of the second husband. I'm, I'm the product of the first. And he, he usually listened to me, but he didn't this time. He told me to go fuck myself. So I, uh, I persisted and persisted. Finally, he comes out, locks his door, goes downstairs, and then he won't leave. And I come back in, he comes back in. I, now I get pissed, and I tell him to get out. And we had ended up having this big fight, big, big, horrible fight, smashing stuff. It was terrible. And I chased him out of the house and ran him down the street. My mother clapped because apparently he had been terrorizing her the whole time I was gone. That's not good, right? So he had a psychotic break. They ended up putting him in a loony bin for three months. And then he was in a special high school after that for people with issues. And uh, he graduated. He was pretty much doing fine. Then he became a, a born-again Christian. And I got nothing wrong with that. But this particular group, uh, they were extra born again, apparently. They were, like, born three times. And uh, one day he says to me, this is after I get back from Fiji. I come back. I'm in my mom's house and he's visiting. Where was he living there? I think he was living at my mother's house again at that point. And he says, uh, I'm moving to Connecticut to be with God. What? You're moving to Connecticut to be with God? Isn't God everywhere? Well, no, no. God is my my uh, my friend so-and-so, and his wife is... It's kind of like they're split. The guy is the, ho the, the father, and, and she's the Holy Spirit or something. Like, um... Okay, and where are you going to stay with them? I mean, you're going to live with them? Oh, no, no. Uh, I have to get my own apartment. Oh, so God's not going to put you up on a sofa or nothing? No, no, i got to get my own place. Okay, fine. So he moves down to Connecticut. About, I don't know, eight, nine months later, I move to uh, Hawaii. And uh, he's, you know, down in Connecticut doing whatever he does. I don't even know. I think he was collecting s uh, some kind of money for being, um, for having mental problems. So, uh, my brother Mark, the youngest, he moves out to live with me in Hawaii. He had an own, his own problems. And, uh, my brother John, I mean, at a party the night before he left, and like three days later, I get this email from my brother in the morning. It says, um, I will, I'm going to kill you. I will strap you to a bed where I will feed you IVs. The baby is mine. I'm like, what? And then I get another email. Like, it was two emails in a row, so I open the next one. And it says, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord of hosts. So as I'm absorbing this in Hawaii, I get a phone call from uh, my mom. She says that John has been arrested. Like, what? So here's what happened. He had a psychotic break. And uh, apparently he tried to rape and murder the upstairs uh, occupant of another apartment, this lady. And uh, cops were called, and when they arrested him, they found out he had a ball gag and some rope in his pocket. <laughs> yeah. And he told her he was going to rape her and kill her. When I was, when the story first was came to me, it came to me in several waves. This story over the years, uh, it was like he didn't do anything. He just said he wanted. He just kind of grabbed her arms and she fought him off. And next thing you know, I found he's beating her and stuff. I mean, he was doing terrible things. And I thought he said that he wanted to have make love with her so she could have the next Jesus. No, no, no. It turns out he said he was going to rape her and kill her. And he had all this porn on his computer, all this bondage porn. It was pretty horrible. So then he gets to the court. You know, he's in the arraignment, and he 
has a freak out in the in the courtroom. He said he saw the music coming out of the judge's mouth and whatever. And so he, he hit a bailiff. He just went ape shit. So my brother John ended up getting 55 years for attempted rape and uh, assault on several police officers. And they sent him to a uh, the kind of prison that you go to if you've got mental problems. And he ended up being uh, like really good friends with Michael Skakel, the one that was accused of killing that Kennedy person. And uh, my brother John became this master chess player. He's like internationally rated now in the prison system. Nobody has ever beat him in the prison. I'm not even sure anybody's ever beat him like in his correspondence either. He does the chess by mail thing. <laughs> Once a month you get king to king to bishop three or whatever. It's like what? That's not even a move, is it? I hope it's not a move because you don't want to mess with the king. Anyway, so uh, for a while I was getting these you know wacky letters and uh, you know all the crazy stuff he he was thinking and wanting to do and asking me to do stuff for him, just insane stuff. And he's calmed way down now. He's taken his meds finally. He's in a, a, a pretty peaceful place overall. He doesn't get in trouble with the uh, the authorities in the prison anymore. He used to always get in trouble with them because he loved or loves to annoy people. But I think they finally beat that out of him. He finally learned, oh, you mean if I act like a jerk, people are going to be mean to me? Yeah. So this is the story of my brother. He's in prison for attempted rape and assault on several police and court officials, unfortunately. Sadly for him and for everybody else. But in a way, he really needs to be, he needs care, you know, he needs something because he's a danger to society, he's a danger to himself. And I hate it that he's in there. I love my brother, but what else can you do, you know? He's in Connecticut. He's over by the Sandy Hook place there. So, uh, yeah, that's my brother John. <laughs> very, very funny guy. And one of the best poets I've ever read. Wrote some really touching, beautiful poetry. He's a talented artist. He can draw. He's just amazing in the stuff that he can do. And I guess that's the same with a lot of people who have, like, a genius ability. They're great in one thing, but not at all good in something else. So I don't know if I'm going to go straight across here. Does this guy have any nuts? Nope, he doesn't have any nuts. And I don't think he can have nuts, because that just wasn't an opening for him. Uh, my brother Mark, <clears throat> you've seen him in some videos. He's doing okay. He's in Hawaii. Uh, in Hawaii, listen to me. He's uh, in Western North Carolina, and he's healthy. He's working, and uh, he thinks that the uh, the zombie apocalypse is coming. So he's got a bow and arrow, and he's got several guns, and he's convinced that, you know, the government's going to break down, and it's every man for himself. <clears throat> I disagree with him, and we, we've had quite a few uh, arguments over it, but, you know, now I, I just realize, just shut up, Mike, just shut up, you're not helping anything, you ain't going to change him. He's happy, I guess. He's happy and he's healthy. And so that's all that really matters. He was going to come to visit, but, you know, with the COVIDs and all. So that's not going to happen. And then uh, he was going to go up to Boston to visit my, my mom and them. And nope, 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 nope. That's not happening now. I don't have any updates on my brother-in-law, Ken. Uh, last I knew, he was still unable to breathe on his own. He's still in a coma. I haven't heard anything new. Uh, 
but I'm feeling fine. So you don't have to worry about me. Hello. I could have got the COVIDs from that little foray into the store to get cigarettes from my sweet pea. In which case, it was nice knowing you. Wow. Pretty sky, pretty sky. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas to everybody. Merry Christmas to you. All my videos up until Christmas, I'm going to say Merry Christmas. There you go. Do you guys do like I did today? Do you you got to do some chore type stuff? So you just take the bike, you know? Might as well get a little bit of riding in. A little bit of scraping. It's a pretty sky. All right, slow it down. We got, we got neighbors. We got neighbors. Don't want to heal nobody. All right, it's Mike Kelly Seven. I'll talk to you later.